Hello guys, this is CEO speaking again. If you remember, we started a new series of uh, electronic projects. And uh, the first one we've built uh, was a Larson scanner. But now we realize that more we're going to work, more travel is going to arrive. So for that reason, I'm gonna show you today and we're going to build together a special tool to take measurements in logic circuitry. And that tool is going to be a very nice project, this one here. It's a logic probe. So, for the purpose of comparing and seeing different logic probes in action, I prepared here about five logic probes to show to you. This is a trainer used for both analog circuits and logic. Right now we built a logic circuit whose diagram is over here. It's just a standard counter, and the counter itself is a binary counter. It counts 0 to 15. Then we have a decoder and we have a seven-segment display. So if you watch on the trainer, if I'm counting up, the numbers are going exactly like this, okay? When the numbers are going to be bigger than nine, you're going to see some fancy symbols. It doesn't matter. And here, I can count reverse. So my counter is working fine. At the same time with the counter, with the basic diagram of the counter here, we have a BCD to digital or to decimal decoder. So by entering here at the inputs, the four signals, we're gonna see only one output different from the others. So exactly here is the uh, uh, bar graph showing the output, which is different from the others. For instance, if I'm going back to zero, the only one which is off is the first output here. This is the output zero. And then I'm counting up, and as you can see, the output moves. So now, I can count from here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but I can also see what output is because I have my counter. This is the last one. And because this is a uh, BCD to decimal decoder, it doesn't recognize numbers bigger than 9. So anytime you're going to see these fancy numbers here, this is for 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, the 15 is blank. The lights are staying all on because the decoder is not able to practically identify what number is. The number has to be between 0 to 9. But as soon as I go back to 0, take a look at this one. So as you can see, the project is working just fine. And now we want to do what? We want to take the measurements on this project to see how to use the Logic Pro. I'm going to first use my own Logic Pro, this one here. As you know, in logic circuits, there are three basic situations you should measure. One, when the tip of the probe you measure with is actually not measuring anything or it's measuring something we call a limbo state, which is not zero logic, is not one logic. So mine is showing here a zero. But in the moment you touch, in the moment you touch the pin you want to measure, in that moment, you should be able to see, like for me here is the letter L from low. And if I press, this is the reset of my uh, counter. If I press, it goes high. So I'm gonna see the letter H. How do I know it's reset? Because my number here went to zero, okay? So I'm touching here again, low, high, low, high, low, high. Surely the probe is able to do more things because here I'm using the two decimal points uh, to catch pulses anytime they arrive. So easiest way to take a measurement is by touching the power supply. So here is a H because I'm touching the five volt power supply. And here is going to be L from low because I'm touching the ground or the zero volts, okay? So the probe is able to quickly identify to find out what's going wrong by just touching with the tip different points in your circuit so the circuitry inserted inside is going to be able to identify according to the industrial standards what is zero logic, one logic, or if it is a limbo which is neither of zero or one. So far so good. So this is one probe I can use, okay? A second one I can use is going to be this yellow one here. So that's how you can identify it quickly uh, from the internet. So that's a standard logic probe. Uh, this logic probe is able to measure both TTL and CMOS circuits, actually meaning 5-volt system and 12-volt system measurements. Now we put it on TTL because we measured 5 volts. 
uh, here it can measure pulses exactly like mine but we put it on memory so putting on memory first time you measure anything that led is going to remain on it's just showing you that the logic probe is energized and then you have the two leds here high and low and anytime you're going to touch anything like here i'm going to touch exactly the same point as before you see now is the green light showing the low if i press it it's gonna be high low high low high so far so good so at this moment here it's a very simple tool to use actually i leave this one away i disconnect it from here remember that any piece of equipment doesn't matter how simple it is including these ones they need to be energized so they are going to take the energy not from a battery they don't depend on a battery they take the energy exactly from the circuit you have to troubleshoot because your your circuit is energized anyway this probe here has the same buttons as the other one so cmos ttl measurement pulse or memory okay so this one is put in uh, and memory uh, uh, the light remains on and here we have the same two lights green and red for low and high but this one additionally if you uh, take a look it has a little transducer here and take a look what happens i measure the same signal you see the you hear the sound is another one here when i measure high so the frequency is higher lower higher lower higher so it's also a uh, audio indication for this one here so we can take the measurements okay another one i'm going to show you is one embedded on that kind of trainer so with that red wire here i'm monitoring right now exactly the reset of the counter so as you can see the same three lights right here the one to identify pulses the high and the low now the reset is low when i press the button is high high low high low and finally our project our project obviously it takes the energy from the circuit we have to troubleshoot exactly like the other ones and this is the equivalent of the tip for the other ones so if i plug it right here you're going to hear a sound lower frequency is for low when the frequency goes higher is because we measure as you can see on the probe right here on the other probe is a high so this one does not have an optical indication it only has an audio one and it has a nice uh, sliding switch here in the bottom depending on the quality of your ears sometimes you may prefer the sound to be like this this is the one i use some other times you may decide to have a bigger gap between the two frequencies and so you have choices i'm using the one in the middle because for me it's good enough and now what we measure with all the three or all the five probes actually we're going to measure if there is any trouble like the limbo state okay so for the limbo state i'm just going to remove the wire from here okay so in the moment i remove the wire from here it's practically uh, uh, the reset for my counter doesn't work anymore so I can count, I have no problems to count up or counting down, but pressing the button, I won't be able to reset anymore. So my probe, this one, the project we're going to build, it goes silent. So when it goes silent by taking the measurement, that means limbo state. I remove my probe now, okay? Because I don't need any more. We're going to wire exactly one like this. And I'm going to connect the other probes to see if they do the same thing okay so my old probe i connect it over here and by touching the signal it shows my zero by connecting the reset back you see it goes low so now if i'm counting take a look i'm counting i press the button i can reset so when i reset my signal goes high for the reset and the indication here goes to zero so i can count up or can i can count down okay up or down so it's low when i press it goes high but when 
the reset is not connected anywhere it shows a zero it's a indication for me for limbo state so this time I can still count up I can still count down but I won't be able to reset so far so good so I take this probe away and I'm using the other ones the one already connected is that black one and I'm touching the same pin the reset as you can see both lights are off so that's equivalent to the indication of the uh, uh, sound based probe that the signal is just missing and if I connect the reset back now you can hear the lower frequency I press the reset higher frequency you see low high and now I'm going to disconnect this one I'm going to connect the yellow one and I'm going to take the same measurement over here so if I reset everything is fine I can count up I can count down and I can reset you see this uh, if the reset is disconnected accidentally let's say none of the lights are on exactly like the black one I can count down I can count up I have no problems okay I can count both directions however the reset does not show anything because it's not connected to the desired signal now it is so it goes up or down up or down okay so we connect our project one more time just to see what we are going to expect when working the other probes we don't need so we touch with this one here this is going to be the low because it's a low frequency high low high low of course I can count up or down I can reset but in the moment the signal is not connected nowhere there is no more sound so the probe goes silent okay so we checked with all the probes and everything was just fine now let's go on the bench to wire one such project okay guys